Hey guys, Agnard here. Hope you and your family are doing well. So, have you ever thought about what it takes to hook a utility trailer up safely and make sure that when you go down the road, you're, you're hooked up and everything's good? Well, today we're going to talk about what we do here on our little farm in East Texas, and uh, here we go. So, we're standing right here in front of Old Blue. She's a 2013 F-150, and she's just been uh, as reliable as can be. We have our little 16-foot bumper pull trailer. Um, probably got her in 2006, actually. And so she's, she's been well used, but uh, enough with the introductions. Let's talk about um, trailer hitches first. And so there's about um, three kinds of trailer hitches that are pretty popular. This is a two inch ball. Um, this is a two inch trailer hitch. So you want to make sure whatever size ball you have, you have the, the same size hitch. Uh, there are two other kinds. One's a one and seven eighths. Um, and it's, it looks very similar to this, just a little bit smaller. So it all it typically says on top of it or on the side. And then there's a two and seven eighths. Uh, one and seven eighths balls are typically for um, sports, uh, watercrafts, you, fishing boats, uh, jet skis and two and seven eighths balls are typically what we use in uh, goosenecks. So the most common is two inch and uh, you hook that up and you should be good. Um, there's also something that's called a pennel hook. I don't see a lot of those in farm use or utility use, probably more in construction. And uh, of course, gooseneck, that's a whole nother, whole nother conversation. We have our seven way RV plug that we have right here. This has become very popular in the past 10, 20 years. Um, you have your typical four plug uh, flat um, connector there. This is um, pretty cheap and very easy to, to replace and use, but they booger up. Um, these little pins will, will come undone or get, um, like I said, uh, boogered up and they don't work well. And then the six-way plug. This probably used to be the more common that we'd use in, in farming on gooseneck trailers and, and whatnot with, to make sure we have enough for trailer brakes. Uh, as you see, most vehicles now, they come pre-wired with these two types of plugs. One is, like I said, the RV plug that goes right there, and the other one is the four-way, uh, which you see. Back in the day, back when I was a kid growing up, trailers didn't come with receiver hitches. They didn't come with trailer lights, trailer plugs. You had to always come back and add those things, um, either with just a ball in your bumper and then later on the, the drop hitch. Uh, not going to go into this much, but this was the typical plug that, like I said, we used in farming that we'd add. So I came and I actually removed this flat plug from my trailer and put this on just because it's so easy. It has this little slot. This is the male end. There's the female end. It has this little slot that um, helps it to line up and, and uh, keeps it from getting crossed and like I said, these are pre-wired, the, 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 the right wires on the right connector. You just need to make sure that your, your trailer is wired correctly. And you're going to find that yellow is left turn, green is right turn, brown is tail marker or running lights, and white is ground. And I always ground my, my trailer wires to the, um, I go, you know, I know it's grounded through the metal, but I go ahead and add another additional wire to the trailer. That's just me. That's just what I do. So we're going to hook this puppy up. I'm going to hook this, plug this in here, um, lower this down, latch it, put a safety pin through here, hook the chains up, and uh, here we go if this gets a little loud. So, And then we're going to push that, push that pin in. That's in right there. Like I said, I typically have a wire. They have... Um, actual pins that are designed for this but the idea is that you um you don't you don't want this to pop up and so if you do that you're in good shape um let me hook this wires up once again we're going to line this slot up right here with the slot right in there hey i'm pretty good one hand there that's in good it has a that little catch, don't know if you can see that. That no way you know you're all the way in there. Um, like I said, crisscross your chains. Just 
the idea of crisscrossing your trains is that if you, um, for whatever reason, your trailer comes undone, it's a fail safe. It's still connected to your vehicle. Uh, and you crisscross it just so if it falls, it will fall in between this, uh, the chain and the, the weight of it will cradle it, giving you more stability. I'm not saying that works or doesn't work. That's just um, what the idea is. So, as I said, this is a utility trailer. It's a 16-foot. We got this thing many years ago and uh, has two 3,500-pound axles on it. And one of the checks that I like to do is once I get it hooked up and off the jack and lower that up, let me raise that up some more, is I like to do what I call a torsion test or a wiggle test. And so literally I'll push down right here. And what you want is minimal torsion um, because these utility trailers, the main frame is that right there. And uh, my tractor's 6,900 pounds. This is a 7,000 pound trailer, so I'm right at max, two 3,500 pound axles. And so, um, if if I ever got a bad weld snap or something, that's this is the time to find it, not going down the road. So, like I said, it, it's um, two by three angle, three sixteenths, it's not even quarter wall, so it's pretty. I don't think that's quarter wall, um, and so it's pretty, uh, it's got some flex and, um, uh, you know, I don't know with this trailer if, if I had a 50, 80 square bells in it, you know, I wouldn't hesitate. I'd go down the road all day long doing 85 miles an hour on interstate. With that big um, tractor on here, and typically I'll pull it with my um, my gooseneck, but if I have it on here, I'm not going to do 85 uh, with this thing maxed out on interstate uh, going down the road with my hair on fire. So, uh, you know, I might do 55, but... Um, anyway, that's, that's just a safety check for me. So I hooked it up. Know that when you're backing your trailer up, a lot of vehicles have, um, backup cameras, love them. That's, that's one of the great modern things we do these days. If your vehicle doesn't have that, have a spotter, have someone over here in this vicinity that can help guide you. And it just makes it so much easier than backing up, stopping, pulling forward, backing up again, scooting over this way and what have you. Uh, another thing I do before I hook it up is I put a, um, a block behind the tire. I chalk the tires. Uh, that way, if I bump into it, it can either roll forward or roll backwards and place the, the block up accordingly because uh, people like me get impatient and uh, I'll, I'm, I'm very likely to bump it and roll it and I don't want one to get away from me. Make sure that your tires are inflated prop properly. Uh, this trailer, I think, is calls for 40 by the manufacturer. Not necessarily the tire, but the manufacturer of the trailer. The, um, you know, you want to make sure that it has the proper load rating. These are a, a little bit heavier ply tire than just your car tire, your typical car tire. Make sure your springs look good, all your um, uh, hardware in there, your, your your linkage and all, your lug nuts look good, uh, valve stems look good. Keep walking around. Oh, I do want to say one thing that uh, here in, in Texas, Department of Transportation recommends not recommends, they mandate, you have 50% reflective tape, and that's the two-inch red and white reflective tape on the sides. 50% on the sides and 100% on the back. And uh, I'm going to put a link below in case you need it. Uh, you can get that at Amazon pretty pretty reasonably. I'm going to do a video of adding that um, to this trailer. And actually, I may wire our um, bumper pull stock trailer, so if you want to learn how to wire that i'll i'll be doing that in the near future so keep following around as i said reflective tape on the back it's a hundred percent and um, if your trailer uh has ramps make sure they're secure and their proper carriage um, saddle or whatever i have these trailer ramps here i just throw them in the back literally i was coming up here this is our top hay meta and the other one was right there along with a chain and a boomer it's <laughs> somewhere between uh, the house in here, it, it fell out. So I will be uh, looking for that and making sure that uh, I recover those and secure them. So hence part of why I'm doing this video. So keep walking around. Oh, you know what? Uh, let's test our lights. Hold on one second. All right. So I pulled some movie magic and I turned the flashers on. And um, as you can see, they're working here and they're working there. And so there's um, a couple of functions that I do to test the lights. I put on the hazard lights. 
Uh, not only does that work for your hazards, but that can also simulate your um, left turn and right turn. Uses the same wire, it's just a different function on the vehicle. So um, if you have flashers, you're in good shape, as well as your parking lights. Turn on your parking lights and make sure that your, um, you know, the little dimmer uh, running light is working. And uh, in this sun, it's not going to show up or else I'd probably show you more in depth. Keep walking around and everything's looking good. Okay, so let's talk um, receiver hitches. So when you hook your trailer up, you want your trailer to uh, be level or just a little bit inclined is most desirable. What you don't want it to be is uh, lower. And so all vehicles are designed differently. Uh, I know some of you Ford, Chevrolet, and Dodge people uh, all have uh, ideas on that. and That's another video uh, we won't discuss here. But uh, you have different vehicles. You have different suspensions different um you know half ton three quarter ton one ton they all sit up higher and differently some people have bigger tires some people have smaller tires and it go the list goes on and on with that being said your your receiver hitch um you have some uh some variation that you can control and you take for example uh and i'm going to zoom out here in just a minute matter of fact i'll show you right now i'm going to try this and boop <laughs> i don't know that might be cheesy we might have to cut that out <laughs> But um, as you as you see, you want the um, trailer to be level or a little bit higher. Um, the receiver hitch, you can, like I said, you can get some variation. You can turn it the other way, put the ball in differently. It can increase the height. You have some that have like a two inch drop, which like those two you see there. You can have some that have a four inch drop, yeah, all the way to a six. And there's one that a, a big long bar that'll vary up and down. Um, remember, keep it simple. The, the 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 simpler you can keep this the better off you are that being said just the key i want you to take is that you want it to be uh level or slightly uh raised when you're loading your trailer make sure that your weight is 60 percent of your weight is on the first front half and 40 percent is on the back half and it's just gonna allow you to um to maneuver the road much more manageably um, I, I've never had a trailer get away from me and I don't want to start. Make sure you secure all your stuff. Make sure that, uh, you strap it down, chain it down, tie it down, you know, duct tape and bang wire go a long way. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I've been going down some of the, the farm to market roads here in East Texas. And there's always some jack wagon out there that has 25 round bells on his flatbed trailer and not a single one of them are strapped, chained, tw uh, tied down in any capacity and he's doing 65 miles an hour I think he's just all kind of king cool um you know that king cool guy with that kind of load makes a abrupt stop something's going to get away from him so um i implore you please please strap and, and secure your um your load down well you know i kind of pulled this video started this video just because mrs agner was was uh pulling some hauling some round bells for one of her friends and i felt if i could do this for her that someone else might get some benefit out of it as well so i hope this video finds you well god bless you and your family um don't forget to like uh and subscribe and uh, share i hope you find this video um hope you find it helpful shoot me a comment god bless you and your family ag nerd out